Hey beautiful people, what is up? Welcome back to my little corner of the interwebs and welcome to another ranking the last 10 eyeshadow palettes I've tried. Y'all, mm. mm 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 I'm trying to do these more frequently because I feel like I end up waiting too long. So I'm glad I actually got to 10 this time. Anyways, before we dive in, if this is your first time watching me, welcome. I'm Jamila and, I'm, and on my little corner of the interwebs, I like to focus on high-end luxury and indie products at the best prices. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and join the fam. It's a vibe. Okay, so full disclaimer, you guys have seen this outfit and this look and this face multiple times. And that's because I'm filming back to back to back to back today, which I always do. So I don't even know why I disclaim in this. It is what it is. So let's go ahead and just dive into the top, well not top 10, but the 10 eyeshadow palettes that I've used and me ranking them. So real disclaimer now, uh, these are just my choices and these are my choices based on like today, right now, <laughs> in this exact moment. Meaning that over time my opinions might change, I might feel differently about some of these. This is literally how I feel right now. So if something is at the end that is like higher for you or you absolutely love it, you like it, I love it. That don't mean nothing. So I just want to know, please don't take it personal. It really is just kind of a how I feel right now about these palettes. I'm going to tell you guys about a couple of different factors that actually play into how I rank things. Uh, most of the time it is quality, but there are some things I think about when it comes to color story and price. I'm not going to lie, y'all. Price has become a bigger factor in my life. <laughs> um, and mainly like price per quality quality so if I do think that it's overpriced for what it is it definitely drops it down a lot of it in my book a lot of times so that's just a, a little bit of context there so anyways let's go ahead and dive into the ranking okay so coming in at number 10 and I cannot believe this is coming in at number 10 it makes me quite sad I'm gonna give it to the unveiled palette by Sydney Grace this one hurts my feelings <laughs> I feel personally like sad about this one because in theory there's nothing wrong with this palette and I say that because theoretically this is an absolutely beautiful stunning eyeshadow palette the color story of this is quite basic though it is a neutral palette with sort of the three tiers of neutral if you want to think about it there's the warm neutral middle row the kind of pinky mauvey row up top and then a cool toned row now this palette is very specific it was designed with a um bridal makeup artist in mind so kendra Mathais, i hope i'm pronouncing that right um she's a bridal makeup bridal makeup artist so this was designed for sort of like that bridal look um and I think it makes sense the way this palette is laid out. So th there are a couple of reasons why I'm not like into this too much. One, I'm not a bridal makeup artist. So when it comes to palettes that are specifically designed for MUAs in mind, sometimes they just don't jive with me. Uh, two, I'm not in love with the shimmer, sh shimmer selection for this palette. I've played with this uh, twice now. And what I've come to realize is that some of these shimmers are just a little too light for me. So these two shimmers here, which are the lightest shimmers in the pan, in the palette are uh, a little bit icy on me and I'm saying a little bit generously they are quite icy on me and I am a medium deep complexion which means that there are people that are darker than me so it's gonna look even icier on them I think these shimmers are better suited for a lighter complexion than they are for like me and deeper so that kind of bothered me a little bit because the next two shimmers in this palette and there are only four are these two shimmers which are actually quite dark and given that bridal looks tend to be a little bit lighter a little bit more ethereal like a glow from within kind of thing like you're not going for a smoky vibe on your wedding day i think maybe <laughs> up to you but like typically brides are not going for a smoky deep grungy vibe they want something that's light that's ethereal that just kind of like brings out the existing beauty and I feel like these two are too dark for me so like I have two shimmers that are icy on me and two shimmers that are too dark for the bridal look granted I'm not using this for a bridal look but I just feel like there was nothing in between I feel like between these two and these two there's nothing like in the mid-tone range which is what I would need for my complexion so that's why I knocked this down and that's why it's at the bottom really is because I feel like it's just missing something for my complexion. The mattes are superb, the shimmers are the perfect quality, the Sydney Grace formula is absolutely there, but it's just the wrong shimmer shadows for me. Coming in at number 9, um, I have to give it to the ABH, what's this called? Fall Romance Palette. And I have no real issues with any of these palettes, I will say I like all of them, so this was very, very hard for me. Um, but I'm giving it to the ABH Full Romance Palette because I do think that the ABH formula is quite nice, it's beautiful, but 
it that's just kind of it <laughs> that's why it starts and it stops ABH is one of those brands that's reliable that's kind of consistent at least as of the later palettes that they've released they've all been good like there's nothing bad about them there's nothing bad I can say about them it's just good and you all already know when it comes to my collection good is not good enough anymore I need things that are gonna stand out to me what I will say and what I will give this palette brownie points for is that um if you are darker than me if you are dark period if you have a drop of melanin in your skin thank you <laughs> like this this is this was definitely made for like people with darker complexions in mind and I appreciate that you know like I've heard folks with like the skin tone say that it's too dark and too grungy for them and that's totally fine that's totally valid but this is a palette where if you are darker complexion you can use every single shade none of these are gonna pull ashy on us and you guys are no like we are used to getting palettes that will have those two slash three matte ashy shades that we can't use so to have a palette that is completely usable for us is always amazing now in terms of the color story i do think that it's okay it's nice it's an everyday wearable color story so like I definitely got some use out of this one because it's one that you can just put on and the lids and, and go. I love that they included this dual chrome, I think. I wouldn't call it a multi-chrome, but this dual chrome kind of green to gold shift. It's actually really pretty and quite strong for a mainstream brand, but not too overwhelming because I think, as I've said before, any dual chromes and multi chromes can just be too much. I think that this is the perfect level of shiftiness for people that are shopping in mainstream brands and don't want something that's overwhelming. Uh, the one shade that I didn't like and I thought was weird was this kind of like pinky purpley shade. I just don't understand why it's there. Like why? Because you get all of these kind of like brown green shows, shades and then this purple. Very random. Uh, another thing that I do want to point out and people have brought up this is the fact that these two green shades, basically the exact same shade. Like seriously, it's not that different and it's not different enough for both of them to be in there. That should have been a completely different color. I'm not sure what color, but not the same green shade. So that's definitely something to keep in mind. And in addition to this dual chrome, there is actually another kind of like pinky one that it looks white in the pan, but it is that kind of like pink to white shape. So I really think that ABH did a really great job pulling this palette together. It's absolutely beautiful. It's one of those that you can get a subtle, everyday wearable neutral look, or you could amp it up with these dual chromes. So you definitely have the option to like make this a couple different things. And you know, I said I don't like this purple shade. I don't, but I, I kind of get where it is now because there is like a purpley standard shimmer here. So in terms of versatility, you can get a brown look, you can get a pinky purpley look with these three here, or you can get a green look. So in terms of how much you could do with this palette, it's actually quite a lot and you can mix and match. So I'm not saying that it's a bad palette by any means. I will say that this is probably better than the Cosmos one, which if you have melanin, that's not for us. Just letting you know. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's actually really pretty and amazing quality. This new ABH is giving us quality and I appreciate it because that's how you revamp and redo a brand. Okay, coming in at number eight, I'm giving it to the Stone and Rock palette from Odin's Eye Cosmetics. This is absolutely beautiful. I picked this up during Black Friday and I have been on this journey to like work through all of the eyeshadow palettes that I've had just kind of sitting in a backlog. Green eyeshadow is like, it's just, it just does something to me. I love a good green eyeshadow and this is a green eyeshadow palette. It's like your dream. Um, one thing I will say about this is that it looks like it has more variety than it does. Like, I knew it was a green palette going into this, but I didn't know how green, you know? <laughs> I thought that these would be, or would pull a little bit more neutral, a little bit more golden, but no, they, they really pull green. So, like, I did, like, two or three looks with this, and they were all just, like, green. <laughs> and you're like, but it's a green palette, Jamila. I know that. I know. But I just thought that if I used these goldy shades, I would not get green. But no, you're gonna get green. So... If you are fine with a monochromatic green palette, I think you're going to like this. Um, you're going to get slightly different tones of green, but you're going to get green. So if you are a green lover, I think you're going to like this. Quality-wise, I thought that this was absolutely phenomenal. The good Odin's Eye eyeshadow quality that I know and love. Um, and yeah, I had no issues with this at all. Perfect shine, perfect application. Yeah, I, it, I really I really like this, but I, <laughs> I was just like, oh another green look <laughs> it was kind of funny but i i still had a lot of fun playing in that palette coming in at number seven is another odin's eye palette and i will say this i struggled between putting that palette and this one like where i should put this one because the reality is 
I didn't have a good time playing with this in terms of the formula. This was actually really, really hard to work with. And when I was using this palette, I felt like I had to blend twice as hard. I felt like I had to put a little bit more elbow grease into everything. And by the time I was done and got a look that I liked, it was like twice as long as I would typically take to apply my eyeshadow. And that felt problematic to me because <laughs> Who has the time? You know, who has the time? And it's not what I'm used to when it comes to Odin's eye eyeshadows. That being said, the look was giving everything. This lime green shade, superb, absolutely spectacular. And you guys know I love green eyeshadow. So the reason why this inched out that other palette is because of the fact that this one just was a little bit more versatile. Like you have greens, you have oranges, you have this stunning yellow right here, and then you have this kind of red plum section as well. So in terms of the versatility and the different kinds of looks that I could get, I was able to get more looks and more distinctly different looks using this palette and to play with more colors than just green with this palette. So even though it took twice as long, it was harder to work with, harder to blend, harder to apply everything for some reason, I liked the looks that I created with this so much better than I did with the other Odin's Eye palette, which is why this is coming in at number seven. But you'll realize both of those palettes are still kind of at the bottom of the pile. That being said, I will say that none of these are bad palettes and I would recommend you purchase all of these, just taking into account some of those little things that I had issues with. So coming in at number six, I'm giving it to the Shell We Makeup palette. Now, this is actually what I'm wearing on my eyes right now. I've been testing this out for the last three days and I really like it. <laughs> like, I wish I could say something bad about this because at this point, like, everything that I'm talking to you guys about is just, like, very minute things. Um, so the Shall We Cosmetics formula is one that I discovered last year and I purchased quite a few products from them. They've also sent me some of their products to try. This one I purchased on my own. Um, and this is the mini size of this. What I appreciate from Shelby Cosmetics is that all of the palettes that they release come in a sort of large or full size and a mini size option. And y'all already know, we have too much makeup, so minis are perfect. So I picked up the mini and it is this beautiful sort of purpley color story. Now I think part of the reason why my excitement for this died down is that this kind of came out around like the Halloween, November-ish time period. It was a pre-order. It took a lot longer to get here than it should have. By the time it arrived, I was like, uh the hype is gone. <laughs> you know, like that always happens with me. Um, but that being said, in terms of formula application, everything here is superb. I've used every shade in this palette and I've had zero issues with them. I love the way the Shell We Masks perform. They are soft and blendable and they build really well. There's no patchiness or anything like that. Um, and the shimmers are actually really, really nice as well. They're creamy, but not too creamy in terms of like, I haven't had it increasing or fading or anything. They last really well throughout the day. And they're one of those shadows that I've come to realize that you actually have to let settle. Cause when you apply it initially, you're kind of like, I don't know how I feel about this, but give it like 30 minutes to settle and it's exceptional. Just let it settle for 30 minutes and it's absolutely phenomenal. One of the things that I will say is that these two shimmers are kind of close. They're not exact. So this one is kind of like a silvery and this one's kind of like a purpley pinky shade. Next to each other, they look very similar, but they also create a really nice gradient. It's, it's, it's interesting the way in which they blend into each other and create a beautiful gradient, but they are kind of similar. Let me swatch both of these. So see, we have both of those shades there. So like you can see, they aren't exact, but they're close enough that like, in order for somebody to notice, they have to be a little too close to your face. You know what I mean? Like nobody should be that close to your lids to be able to tell that you have two different shades on. So that, that was something that I did notice is that those two shades are actually a little bit similar next to each other. And then this shade here, which is actually a purple to green multi-chrome, it does not have the strongest shift in terms of multi-chromes that I have seen or have in my collection. So it does pull more green than it actually does purple, which surprised me because it looks stronger in the pan. And then I was like, oh, okay, this is green. <laughs> On the lids, it's like green. So that was certainly something uh, that I wanted to flag because if you are looking for something that is a very, very strong multi-chrome, this is not going to be the palette to give you that. Okay, so we are at the top five and taking fifth place in this rankings is gonna be the Stargazing palette from Nomad Cosmetics. 
this is such a beautiful palette. Uh, it is a multi-chrome eyeshadow palette. Uh, main, well, not multi-chromes, but yeah, you know what? All of these are multi-chromes, and then they have some mattes sprinkled in. So I was... Something about this palette... I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, well, let me start with the mattes. You get the same perfect uh, Nomad Cosmetics mattes. They blend like a dream. They build like a dream. But what threw me off is that all of the dark mattes in this palette are colorful. I don't know why I expected something that might be more neutral leaning, but I felt like when I looked at these, honestly, like these three shades, that there would be like a neutral matte in case you wanted to kind of like neutral things out a little bit. So that kind of threw me off when I was like, oh, so I could either go purple or I could go blue or black, which is like intense, you know? So black is in my, the way I see black is like you using it to deepen up the shade. So like, it's not necessary, it's not like a neutral shade, you know? So I was like, okay, so it's gonna be purple or it's gonna be blue. So you 100% gonna get a colorful look out of this, which makes sense. It's perfectly on theme. Like one thing Nomad is gonna do is they're gonna give you theme. Like I should have known that from the packaging and from the theme itself. Um, the other thing that I wanna flag is that when I was using the matte eyeshadows, this one and this one, they kind of blended into the same shade. So like this looks like a very clear cut gray and this one looks more like a sort of cool toned brown. But next to each other, these both turned into this blue gray shade. And I was like, okay. Like you would not have been able to tell that I was wearing two different mattes. So I, I was a little bit like, eh, about the fact that I wasn't able to get two very distinct looks there. In terms of the multi-chrome formula, these are nice multi-chromes. They're not the craziest multi-chromes, uh, but I do think that these are the types of multi-chromes that if you have issues with creasing, it's going to work phenomenally for you because the creaminess of this is not the type that creases. Like, it's not the type that is super wet or metallic looking so that if you are somebody that has issues with creasing, you're going to be able to use these very easy, very completely very comfortably. So I, I do think that this is overall a very, very nice palette. Um, but I would have liked, honestly, I would have liked a little bit more neutral mattes to balance out this, you know what I mean? Because I feel like sometimes multi-chromes can be a lot. And one way in which I like to tone them down is with a sort of neutral matte shadow base. Because I love putting a bunch of neutral mattes on the face and then adding a multi-chrome to give it a little bit of extra. But this is just an extra palette, 100%. Like, there's no in-between. It's, like, extra, colorful, and that's it. So in terms of, like, what I like and in terms of what I would wear, I feel like this has to be, like, a very occasional kind of thing for me because it doesn't have that neutral matte to balance it out. So... Quality, superb, amazing, uh, no matter quality per use, but it's just something that I was like, mm, that's not going to work for me. Okay, and then coming in at number four, and a palette that actually has kind of the same issue for me is the Machina, I think I'm pronouncing that right, because y'all told me I was wrong, the Machina palette from Blend Bunny Cosmetics. Now you guys know how I feel about the Blend Bunny Cosmetics formula. It is my absolute favorite matte eyeshadow formula. And this palette is the same perfect Blend Bunny mattes. So again, going back to kind of what I thought about the Nomad palette is that this is a colorful eyeshadow palette. It, there's not really a lot of opportunities for neutrals in here or uh, simpler looks. I also feel like there may be a little bit of redundancies as well. So like there's a red row and a pink row. And in some ways, I feel like they kind of bleed into each other a little bit. Like the shimmers are kind of similar. And then these two are like, mm, I mean, they're tonally different. They're very different, but you can see like the, the, the red and the pink blend into each other. I do like the way in which this palette is like a mix of like the humanoid, like human versus machine kind of thing. So you have like the machine side and then the more like human side. Um, so I absolutely love that. The most neutral that you're gonna get is this kind of gray silver row here, so that if you are looking for that, um, and I will say that there is one dud shadow for me in this palette, and it's this kind of lime green shimmer shade. It's very squishy, it's hard to pick up, it doesn't apply the best, and that's why I actually have pan in this, because when I was swatching this palette, I hit pan because I was like trying my best to like dig and get it out. Now the reason why this ranks higher is for this single multi-chrome shade. This shade here, Cyborg, oh my god, like, it is, I'm sorry y'all, it is everything. This Cyborg shade, it's this blue, purple, silvery, 
I, it's just, it's beautiful. And on the lids, it looks even more stunning. Um, so this one shade is what blew this entire palette out of the water. It was absolutely perfection. Like I'm willing to look past the lime green shimmer, which let me swatch that one also for you guys. Um, because I really did struggle with that. Um, I don't think it picked up well. And it did not translate really nicely to the lids, in my opinion. Yeah. Like, I feel like I did a big swatch and it, this feels, like, really thin, you know? So, it definitely was not my favorite shade and I feel like I struggled with it a little bit. So, that's my biggest con with this palette. Uh, and this palette also, like, ranks higher than a lot of the other ones, just here's the sheer meaning behind this. If you know, if you listened or read Maggie's story, the creator, um, the owner of Blend Buddy story, uh, this palette was created in collaboration with her dad who has since passed. So it is like very special. And as someone who's a very big daddy's girl, <laughs> um, it meant a lot to me too, because I am a huge daddy's girl. And I understand that like connection between daughter and dad and to be able to work on something together. I know that it, it meant a lot to her. So yeah, um, so that comes in at number four. Okay, don't attack me, don't come for me in the comments, but coming in at number three, it's gonna be the House Labs Volume One Super Neutrals Palette. Um, <laughs> okay, so I know I said that I take price into account, so the price in this that I'm taking into account is the half price, because the full price of this is just stupid and it's absolutely not worth $49. But at $24.50, she's worth it so and i struggled with ranking this so high but i'm gonna be honest with y'all it actually is not as bad as people say it is so yes the mats need to be deeper period i think that or well, i don't even know but we all know that these are cream to matte formulas and cream to matte shadows from my experience always appear significantly deeper in the pan than they do when applied to the lids. And I don't know if when they were pulling this together, they were like, oh yeah, we got some depth, but nobody swatched it <laughs> or nobody applied it. But it just doesn't go deep enough, like at all. Now this one is absolutely stunning. It's a beautiful shade and I think it works so well on my skin tone. But the deep brown is just like, why did you bother showing up? And then this light matte shade is like a complete waste for my complexion. It just doesn't do anything. At best, I can use it to set my concealer on the lids. At best. That's it. So it's hard for me to rank this as high as it is because at least two of the shades in this six pan palette doesn't work. You know, like it's not the best. And this is only six shades. And technically this is a $49 eyeshadow palette. So in theory, this should probably be in last place because... The price and the quality, and it's just, it's not adding up, okay? But, hear me out. These shimmers, they saved the show. Like, these shimmers are stunning. And apologies, I have my ring light on, so it is creating a little bit of a glare, but I hope you guys are getting this. Um, but these shimmers, they're so beautiful. They are amazing high quality metallics. And yes, you can get these metallics everywhere. But when I was done with this look, and I mean like at the end of the day done with this look, I went to the bathroom to take it off and it looked just as good as it did when I applied it in the morning. And you guys, I wear my shadows for a very, very long period of time. Like I get dressed in the morning for work and I'm wearing these shadows. So we're talking about like eight o'clock to like eight o'clock. So 12 hour days is when I'm typically wearing my shadows because I don't take them on immediately after work either. Unless I'm going to the gym, then it comes off at five. But for the most part, eight to eight is where I'm wearing these. And when I tell you that those shimmers were still shimmin and looking exactly like how I put it on, I was blown away. I was completely surprised by it. So I had to give it the ranking because I, I really did enjoy the look that I created with it. I do think that this is one of those palettes that's super easy to travel with. As long as you can get past the fact that the mattes aren't deep, which in some ways I'm okay with that because you all know I also love the Charlotte Tilbury Beauty Vase palette, which is equally not as deep. Um, so yeah, I was able to get past it. So it's coming in at number three. Two palettes left and in second place I'm giving it to the Wonderland palette from Cosmic Brushes. This is just beautiful. Y'all know I love blue eyeshadows and this is just an absolutely stunning eyeshadow palette. 
and quite versatile as well. I remember when I first saw this, I was like, but it's just like blues. Why does one person need 20 million blues? But I was wrong. So you get blues, you get purples, and you get teals. And I really appreciated once I had this in my collection, how versatile this palette was. Because you don't only get like the dark, rich purples, but you get the lavenders as well. So you have some variation in the blues. And then, uh, in the, sorry, in the purples. And then when it gets to the blues, you have like the bright royal blue, but you also have the teal leaning colors. And for good measure, they threw in a blue to purple multi-chrome in like that deep black based blue to multi-chrome and then also one that's kind of more iridescent. So I feel like this was such a well thought out, well curated palette. And there's also like the kind of light sky blue shade as well. So in terms of like color story, it's not just like one dimensional. I feel like there's definitely so much options in here. Now you're not gonna get a neutral look and I fully accepted that when I bought this blue palette and you guys know I like a neutral look, but this was a blue palette. They never claimed to be neutral and I don't, I, I really, really like how this worked out. And I like the price point of this. I think that there's a lot to be said when it comes to cosmic brushes and the fact that they're able to keep their products so incredibly affordable um, and include multi-chromes and include, include a mirror. So I'm just saying, price-wise, it, like, it honestly gets so much extra points for the price. The one downside I will say when it comes to cosmic brushes and their formulas is that it does not have great longevity. Like I said, I wear my shadows all day because I get ready for work and then they're just there. So at least at a minimum eight hours, typically 10 to 12. Um, so I found that at the end of the day, the shadows have faded pretty significantly. And that is something that I noticed because I don't have complicated lids. Like I know some, some of you guys will ask me about like creasing and all that other stuff. And that never happens to me. So like when things like that happen, like when my shadow creases or it fades, it stands out because it's not a common thing for me. I don't have oily lids. I don't have dry lids. Like my lids are just like normal, basic. I don't have hooded lids either. So I don't have real issues with creasing because my I have a ton of lid space. So I don't have issues with creasing. Um, and I don't really have anything that causes my shadows to go one way or the other. So like for the most part, I can slap any eyeshadow on my lid and it's just going to work, which I really <laughs> appreciate because your girl is not a makeup artist. So when things like fading happens, creasing happens and whatnot, I notice. So I know I did notice that it faded and by the end of the day, it wasn't as vibrant or as punchy as the beginning. You know, like, like I said with the house labs, it was still shimming the way it shimmed when I initially put it on. Cosmic brushes did not do that. I'm not mad at it because the price was right and in theory, I, like if I was going to an event, I wouldn't be wearing it for that long, but whatever. Um, so yeah, just something to keep in mind if you are the type of person that wants your shadows to look exactly the way it did at the beginning to the end and you're going to be wearing it for a really long time. It's going to fade. It's going to look slightly different. It's going to look, it's going to look a little less dull. It's going to look a little more dull, I should say. Just an observation. Okay. And then coming in at number one, drum roll, please. Da -da 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 Those are horns, not drums, but it is what it is. I'm, I have to give it to the Dragon Palette from What's Up Beauty. Now this is a relatively new addition to my collection, but it has quickly stolen the show. Um, this palette, y'all, when I tell you I had so much fun playing in this, and this was a completely new brand to me, so it really struck me by surprise because there are very few things that get me excited. There are very few things that tickle my pickle and made me go, huh. I want to see more. And that's because I've tried so many different brands, so many different formulas, that in a lot of ways I'm overwhelmed and in a lot of other ways I've seen it all. You know what I mean? So when I tried this, I was like, this is different. This is new. This is exciting. Let me let me learn more. So I do have a full first impressions video on this. So I'll be sure to link that down below, as well as any videos I have for any of these other palettes in case you want to check those out. Um, but what I will say in summary in terms of why this palette ranks so high is that this is giving luxury at an affordable indie price and with an indie flair. So luxury makeup tends to be a little bit more subtle, a little bit more subdued and not as flashy, which is fine because I think that there's a time and a place for that. And indie makeup tends to be doing the most over there. Um, and a lot of times they're formulated very differently. Uh, so to get an indie brand that has a Italian formula, which tends to be what the luxury houses use, was surprising to me. So it got me really interested in it. And I feel like in terms of the quality of this, it's absolutely superb. 
the the mattes uh and i heard another creator describe it this way and i feel like that was the perfect word they're silky they're not just soft and buttery and blendable they have like a silky feel to them and that i was shooketh because i was like this feels different this feels good so it has the mattes of the super silky feel they blend really nicely I will say it's not the it's not as good of a blend as with my Blend Bunny cosmetic shadows because something about those shadows they just kind of blend themselves and I get like a perfect gradient. I'm not able to get the perfect gradient with this because it does take a little bit more to blend it together, but it is a beautiful blend nonetheless. Um just I don't know what kind of voodoo magic is in Blend Bunny, it's just saying. But this one is a super silky feeling matte shadow. And then the shimmers, the shimmers have this very sort of finely milled sparkle to them that's creamy but not the type of creamy that feels creasy it's creamy in that it like adheres to the lid and it just kind of stays there it doesn't be doing too much it's not moving up and down it's not going in places it shouldn't go it just kind of like sits there now these are multi chromes and dual chromes they're not the craziest shift so if you want something that if you're expecting like the crazy indie shift you're not gonna get it here but i do think it's a nice shift where it's not overwhelming and it's like uh did you notice that kind of thing so someone like if you're talking to somebody and you turn your head they're gonna be like wait did i see what i thought i saw it's that kind of subtlety and beauty that really drew me into this palette so I had a lot of fun playing with it. It, always, it is also quite versatile. Like you get some purples, you get some greens. So you can stay kind of neutral, but you can also like spice it up if you wanted to with mixing the purples and the greens and whatnot. But yeah, overall, I think that this is superb. It's phenomenal. I am interested in looking at the other palettes they have. I saw a number of you guys commented on that video and said that you have the Geodes palette and you really like it. Um, so I'm thinking about looking into it. Although I will say the thing that's giving me pause when it comes to Geodes is that from what I understand, the Dragon Palette is a new formula from the Geodes, right? Let me double check that. Okay, I can't find anything confirming that, so it might be the same formula, which means I probably should check it out. Um, the Geodes does seem to have lighter mattes, um, <laughs> so maybe, maybe not. Anyways, it is, but they also are magnetic pans and whatnot, so you can switch things around. That being said, I will say, as you can probably tell, I'm very interested in the brand. I'm interested in seeing what else they put out. And I am really looking forward to diving more into, like, this sort of luxury indie market space. Um, and I'm not talking about, like, the Pat McGrath luxury indie market, but, like, this really small, because it's a small indie brand, you know? So I'm intrigued, and I had a lot of fun with it. And that's why it's my number one palette for this ranking the last 10 eyeshadow palettes I've tried. Okay, so now it's your turn, you guys. Let me know down in the comments below. Uh, were you surprised by my rankings? Did anything catch you off guard? Are you interested in any of these palettes? Do you have any of these palettes? And you know, what would you say about them, if anything? It, as always, if you don't want to leave a comment, leave your orange hearts down below. They mean so much. And they definitely help me in the algorithm. <laughs> I want to thank you guys so much again for rocking with me, for supporting me, for watching all my videos. I appreciate you guys so much more than you know. And before you leave, if you haven't already done so, make sure you hit that subscribe button so that you know when another video is coming because y'all so much new content and I have all of these ideas for things that are not exactly beauty related so I'm gonna be testing out a couple of things it might be a little shaky but you know y'all in this little rickety van with me as we go down the road and we try new things so <laughs> join me in this little shaky weird journey of me exploring new different types of content anyways that's it for today I appreciate you guys so much more you know thank you for watching and I'll catch you in my next one bye